always on your side. This is First Coast News at 5. And we are following two breaking news stories at this hour. At least nine people are dead and 16 injured after they were struck by a van that jumped the curb and mowed people down on a sidewalk in Toronto, Canada this afternoon. In just a few minutes, the details on whether or not this was a deliberate act of terrorism. Plus, a suspect in a quadruple homicide at a Waffle House near Ta Nashville, Tennessee, has been captured. How he was caught. But first tonight, showers and storms are all through the first coast throughout the day, dumping some really heavy rain, causing some flash flooding. I bet you got wet. Oh, yeah, you know, right now there are some showers still out there. Tim tells me that they're thunderstorms. Tim Deegan is standing by with the check of your forecast. Thank you, Anthony and Jessica. Let's take a look. So here's what's happened over the last 12 hours, visually representing what Jessica and Anthony were talking about. Now, the steadier rains have headed out. But during the afternoon, heat, showers, and thunderstorms have re-erupted. And this is basically the last round. But in some areas, the rain's coming down heavy. Lightning is out there. It's always dangerous. And some of the thunderstorms, at least in isolated spots, are producing wind gusts to over 40 miles per hour. So now we're just looking at the last hour. Notice they're right along the coast, and they're heading toward the northeast. So first of all, for those of us in the Jacksonville metropolitan area, any new activity would come at us from the southwest. I don't see any. So basically, this supports the idea that this is it. This is the last round and just widely scattered downpours, but some lightning developing in these short lived thunderstorms in and around the Jacksonville metropolitan area. Going to slide to the southeast. This is the strongest event, but notice what's happened over the last hour. It's gone from southern Putnam County through Flagler County with winds gusting to near 50 miles per hour and heavy rain and lightning, but it's now offshore. So for those of you from Flagler County up to St. Augustine, that's probably about it. We're going to slide north now to southeastern Georgia and occasionally, especially along I-95, this portion of the thunderstorm has shown maybe some wind gusts to about 50. It's racing to the northeast. It's just about out of Camden County, but it is now going to head through Glen County during the next hour. During the next several hours, again, the activity will decrease as it heads offshore. But for now, there's still some new storms developing and to check it out with ground truth and her very own eyeballs. We have Lauren out there. Hey there, Tim. Yes, we found a downpour. We're on 295 South, and as you're heading up to the downpour, you can just see the wall of water ahead of you, but then even further, you can see those little pockets of blue skies. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you what we're looking at here. You can see traffic just comes to a standstill because we've got very soggy roadways, and remember, roads are very slippy when, slippery when we see the rainfall very quickly, um, so you're going to want to make sure to take it easy and uh, be not be going too quickly, right? So we've got some ponding on the roadways here. Um, nothing too terrible at this point, but again, the rain is falling so fast. And one thing I was taking a look at earlier is, right, we send up these weather balloons up into the sky, well, right here at the National Weather Service in Jacksonville. One thing I was looking at was the precipitable water, okay? So it was close to two inches. All that basically means is if you take the whole atmosphere and you squeeze it down, that's how much rain we could have fall. And so what that tells me as a meteorologist is that the rain is coming down in very, very big droplets today. So yeah, we're picking up a whole lot rather quickly. And another thing to note as well is we've been talking about this system as it was coming our way. All those water spouts maybe in the panhandle, if you saw any pictures. Well, the good news is that our winds from the surface all the way up to about 18,000 feet, they are still coming out of the southwest. So that means that we just have the chance for a few gusty storms. Otherwise, uh, we're just talking about those very heavy downpours. So we're sitting here in some traffic. We'll continue to look for the rain. Drive safe, everyone. We'll toss it back to you in the studio. All right, Lauren, thank you. And for the latest updates on the severe weather, download the First Coast News app. It's free wherever apps are sold. You'll get push alerts and any new information, or you can also head to firstcoastnews.com. And if you can do it safely, Please take any pictures or videos of the storms and the aftermath and share them with us using the hashtag FCN storm. Now back to that breaking news out of Toronto. We know at least nine people are dead, 16 injured after a van jumped the curb and mowed people down on a sidewalk. They're in Canada this afternoon after a tense standoff. Police took that driver into custody. No word on whether or not this accident was intentional. And the suspect in a quadruple homicide at a Waffle House near Nashville, Tennessee, has been captured. Officials say they captured 29-year-old Travis Ranking about a mile from the shooting in a wooded area not far from his apartment. 
Inking is suspected of opening fire inside a Waffle House early Sunday morning, killing four people and injuring four others. Let's bring it back here at home. Two shopping stores evacuated this morning due to a suspicious device. It happened at the Target along San Jose Boulevard in the Mandarin, Mandarin area. JSO says that device was a black battery box with 3D batteries and an LED light attached to it. First Coast News reporter Camrell Eppinger tells us what happened. Well, at this hour, as you can see behind me, that there are multiple cars here in this Target parking lot, but that wasn't the case earlier this afternoon. There was a heavy police presence. Here's video of that scene that was shot earlier this morning. Now, here's what police tell us. They say they received a call at around 620 this morning from an employee here at Target after he or she found what's believed to be a suspicious package or device. That's when hazmat crews immediately responded to this scene and they were forced to evacuate both the target and the Publix that's right next door. Now we also spoke with another target employee who says she was a bit concerned after she noticed the heavy police presence when she showed up to work. Take a listen. Now I'm reporting to work. I started at 10 o'clock and I was surprised but not shocked because you know a lot of days Nowadays, so much is going on. Yeah, my dad's office is directly in front of all this. So, of course, if there was a bomb that could have been here that would have gone off and my father was at work, I, that would have been not good for me and everyone else around. But that's what made me nervous and made me, you know, concerned. And again, just to recap, the all clear has been given after a suspicious item or device was found inside this parking lot at the Target along San Jose Boulevard in the Mandarin area. Now, we should also mention that police are investigating to see whether or not this incident is related to a reported robbery that happened at the Publix right next door last week. Of course, we'll stay on top of this and bring you updates on our website at firstcoastnews.com and on our mobile app. For now, reporting in Mandarin, I'm Kemeral Eppinger, First Coast News on your side. All right, Kemeral, thank you so much. It's a drug crisis that has the Duval County morgue running out of space, and now syringes left by users are turning up in public spaces. First Coast News reporter Bethany Anderson joins us live from Willow Branch Park in Riverside, where a man says he's been throwing them away. Bethany. That's right. He tells me, actually, he found one of those needles right underneath this park bench and he wants parents, children and even their pets to be careful out here. I glanced down and uh, it was a needle on the ground. For Sean Beerman, finding a heroin needle at Willow Branch Park isn't just scary. There was literally um, four kids playing at the time. It's personal. He lost his brother Brendan to overdose last year. My brother was such a great man and uh, he did a lot of great things for people. He was known a lot in the neighborhood and in our community, you know, here in Riverside. He's got two beautiful young daughters that he's left behind. Over the past few weeks, Sean says he and other friends have found needles surrounding park benches, near swings, and even this basketball court. It's just kind of surreal that, you know, a lot of families just like mine are dealing with this and, you know, coming across that needle are just kind of putting in the perspective of how serious this epidemic is. On behalf of his brother, Sean warns drug users they could be gone at any moment. He was 32 years old. He was a very strong man and he was young, so his body basically saved, but his brain was too far gone. I guess he just happened to party with the wrong person one night and he tried something and it was poison. Sean tells me he let JSO know that this is a problem in the park and they are aware of the situation. I also reached out to the city to see what they're doing about it or who people should call if they want to dispose of those needles. And so far, I have not heard back. Reporting live from Miller Branch Park in Riverside, Bethany Anderson, First Coast News on your side. Very concerning. Thank you, Bethany. An update tonight on the two deputies killed in the line of duty in Gilchrist County last week. The entire town of Trin has been adorned with blue ribbons in their honor with the words Gilchrist strong everywhere you go. Sergeant Noel Ramirez and Deputy Sheriff Taylor Lindsay were killed after they were ambushed while they were eating at a restaurant. The sheriff says there is still no clear motive for the shooting. And after that shooting, the gunman, 59 year old John Hubert Highnote, killed himself. And tonight, not much is known about Highnote, but we do know tomorrow, 
A funeral will be held for Sergeant Noel Ramirez and Deputy Sheriff Taylor Lindsay. The funeral will be held at Bell High School. That's on South Main Street. The funeral will begin at 10 and a graveside service will follow at Bronson Cemetery. That's on State Road 24. The service there will begin at 2. In St. John's County, a man arrested after cutting a cab driver with a box cutter. Police say 33 year old Jonathan Leslie cut cab driver Nathan Tidwell four times. Tidwell says it was over an argument about the cab fare. Leslie has been charged with assault with a deadly weapon. The cab driver is expected to be OK. If you live in Georgia, listen up. Tuesday, April 24th, that's tomorrow, is the last day to register to vote in the May 22nd primary. It will feature Republican and Democrat races for Congress, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Secretary of State. I guess that's the last day to register is tomorrow. Uh, the Hart Bridge Expressway at Beach Boulevard will see overnight detours over the next two weeks. The rehabilitation project includes coating of steel beams, bridge improvements, drainage improvements, and replacement of bearing pads. Construction will begin tomorrow night at 7 o'clock and then last until 5 a.m. That's every night until May 4th. Find another way home. A check presentation was held today at the Jacksonville School for Autism. Last month, Senator Aaron Bean and Representative Jason Fisher successfully passed legislation to appropriate $250,000 to JSA. A check was presented to the school today at the 14th Angle Ante Up for Autism Golf Classic at Deerwood Country Club. Oh boy, it is the time of year when if you're watching television, you're mm -hmm. going to see a lot of those political ads. But you know, Jess, how much truth actually comes out of those ads? I will verify the truth about one political ad you've seen a lot lately. Mm. You might even see it during this commercial break. We'll be right back.